Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Tired. Tired. Oh, goodness. Did you have a busy day yesterday? Yes, I did. I don't know. You saw that I had my first Facebook Live yesterday. I haven't seen that. I haven't been on Facebook. I have to go find it. Yeah, so it was awful, but it's over with. So I'm ready to move on to my second one. Hey, there's no awful. What's the goal <laughs> of a Facebook Live? Get people to watch it. If you yep. heard the story, my, 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 my epic fail when last, uh, last year when I was doing the three house tours on Saturday on Facebook Live, my epic fail was I said, okay, let's look at the garage. And I opened the door and there was no garage. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, like, it oh, oops, fortunately there was a vacant lot next to it. So I said, oh, there's no garage, but there's a vacant lot and it's for sale as well. So you can build a garage here. <laughs> <laughs> Good recovery. Just, just got to roll with it. Yep. All right. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. How's you everybody walk doing? done early today? What's that? Yeah, I did. I was ready to go. I've got a, every two hours I have something scheduled. So it's just enough time to not have enough time in between to do a whole lot. So I had to get it in early. Well, thanks for joining us. A couple minutes because we usually have some tardy arrivals. That's totally and fine. I don't want them to miss you. No so problem. I'm going to get set up on my other screen while we have people log on. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, we're going to start this morning. Jessica with my leverage solutions is going to share some. I know she hates it, but some easy buttons with you guys. Because that's what it is. You know, I have said, Jessica, I have said forever that there's no easy button. You have to do the work. And, and now I have to change that because there is. I would have right. loved to have had you when I was a brand new agent. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's kind of like um, we just, you know, we take your spot. Instead of you sweating it out, we sweat it out for you. Love it. All right, people are coming in, coming in. All right, well, while we wait for everybody to show up, everybody tell me what fun do you have planned for the weekend? 90th birthday party for my aunt. 90th birthday party? That's I have an open house this, today at noon. All right. And then I'm going to some friends for a barbecue. And then we're going to the Freedom Festival here in Greenwood that our church helps sponsor. Very nice. There's a that's lots God. of opportunity for contacts. Yep. I'm doing my first open house tomorrow. Yay. Congratulations. That's cool. exciting. I still don't know the address because Gary Rubel, you know him, Northeast. Mm -hmm. I called him because my dad's friends with him and he was like, well, you can do it on Sunday, I guess. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <coughs> and then he was like, yeah, I'll send you the address. And then he did. So well, you, can look at, look, you can look it up on my board. So what you have to do first is you go search and find the agent and find okay. Gary. So you'll get his agent code and then you can go in and search mm -hmm. the listings for just his listings That's and funny. you'll at least be able to eliminate at that point so that way you can get it on your facebook i'm going to show you really quickly um and gretchen this won't apply to you because it's in my bore but I'm, but I'm sure you have the same thing in your multiple listing service. I just don't know where it is. I'm tempted to move to Indiana just for my board. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> well, I don't know. After you've endured the worst ever uh, testing thing, I don't know you'd want to leave Ohio. So true. <laughs> I, I uh, yeah, the, the, the way you guys have to do your testing is absolutely horrible. Can I give a quick tip to Shelby for a minute? Yes. <laughs> um, on the open house signs, um, I went to Menards. Don't bother to go into to Walmart because they don't have any. And I just went to Menards. But the place where you put the, the time and, the, and the, the date and the address, because that won't come off when you put it on there in, in your 
in your magic marker. I got some white duct tape and I put there and then I just peel it off to put a new one on over the over that, that area under the arrow. Very cool. You can use dry erase markers too. Well, yeah. Shelby, are you um are you close to the Greenwood office? Yes, the closet's full. <laughs> Yeah, and I have some I need to bring back. I was I I think I might do it when I'm up there today. So um, there's um, plenty of open house signs there, and you can just go pick them up. I, okay. I bought them from an auction, and there are just tons of them. So there's the ones that say Keller Williams and Indy Metro PC on them with an arrow and everything, and then oh. there are just the ones that Cynthia are talking about that are like white and red. So training room in that back corner where you were standing for the cabbie thing in that back corner in that closet that's where they're just floated in there and there's right. little riders with different they don't have every time so if you like i did an open house from like three to five and they and that wasn't down there but if you're doing like one to three or 12 to two or two to four there's a ton of them down there all right so shelby what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go here and you're going to need to add additional fields in my bore so I'm on a search screen, search residential, residential quick. Okay. You're going to scroll down here and you're going to add additional fields and you're going to add um, list agent MLS ID. Okay. And then you're going to go up here and you're going to search agent and find Gary. Okay. And I apparently spelled his name wrong. I thought he was Barney Rubble, not. <laughs> so his number is 3951. So then you're going to go in here and you're going to search. And you're going to search 3951. And he only has one active listing. So guess what? We found it. Here's your address 5706 <laughs> Crittenden Avenue. Hey, Carla. Yes. Couldn't you just go to like the the home page, and then there's like um, little um, there's things that you can like search office list your office listings and. Gary Rubel's not in our office. Oh okay. Okay. But yes, for the rest of you, if it's it, if it's an open house in your own office, you just go over here and you type my office active listings. But Gary's in the northeast office and Shelby's in the south office. Okay. So that would not work for her. All right, now we got a good group for you, Jessica. All right, awesome. Um, so Carla asked me first to talk to you guys a little bit about database. So Carla, you'll have to interject because I only know a bit of what you guys were doing. Um, but we had helped Anne get her contacts into her command. And I, uh, Carla let me know that you had won something. I don't know what you won, but she I was excited for you. You won the week. 12 week program. Annie was the winner of the week and right now is in the lead to win the entire 12 weeks. Yeah, which what? was very inexpensive <laughs> for her to hire us to add these people to her database. Um, and then just like magic, like a week or two later, she was sending us over a new listing. Are they connected? I think so. So I just wanted to talk to you guys for a second about what we can offer you. If you don't have your database already in command, um, we can help you for just 25 a list. And that doesn't matter how many people are on that list. So if you have your Gmail, your um, phone, if you have contacts saved that way, um, it doesn't matter if you have 100 or 10,000. It's just one file and it's 25 bucks. So we pull it out, import it into command for you, make sure everything went okay. You check it, make sure it's correct, and then that's it. So it's very easy. Um, we also do services like database tagging. If you're gonna start doing, or you probably already do DTD2, um, that's something we can go through and tag for you. That's a big time saver for you. Um, obviously they're tagged with say A and W, where they pair up two letters where one is a very heavy letter and one you won't have so many people in that letter. So it's a strategic way to call your database so you're not super busy one week, nobody to call the next week. Um, if we tag them with those letters, then it's easy for you to just go through, pull that tag. You don't have to do the guesswork of who do I call? Um, because if you're like me, you suffer from analysis paralysis. And so you'll be 
looking at who you should call for two hours before you actually get on the phone. So anything else, Carla, um, as far as what you know that we offer that might help help them? Well, I love that. I mean, do you have, can you, cause I even, so just so you know, I'm looking at, I think everybody is indie. Um, we don't have any Louisville people on today, but uh, Gretchen's in Columbus, Ohio. So everything Gretchen, everything that my leverage solutions offers outside of transaction coordination um, and listing management, right? Jessica, mm -hmm. you could do for everyone here. So Correct. do you, you have kind of just like a list of things they could be thinking about of what kind of, and here's the thing about leverage. Um, you know, we've been talking about your, the 80, 20 principle, right? And um, we know what our primary job is, right? What are those? Remember? Lead generation. Lead generation. Listings. List, lead follow-up. Okay. Your listings, you're going to where I'm going next. Annie. So lead generation, lead follow-up, script practice and role play, right? Uh, go on appointments and negotiate contracts. Those are our, that's our primary job, right? That's our 20%. That's what's going to get us our thing. All the other stuff, right, is what Jessica can help with. Yeah, and I'm putting our menu, here's a link to our menu if you guys want to check it out. Um, it's just all kinds of marketing, database, um, things that honestly, all of these things you could do. And yet you, do you really want to spend your time doing that versus lead generating? Because if you start doing your marketing, well, then that's your job. I guess you're a marketing person, not a realtor, you know, that's the way I look at it. Gary, Absolutely. Keller says, although the only, only, only correction I'm going to make in your language is do you not, do you want to, it's should you, because a lot of people, a lot of people spend their time doing these things in, there's a bold law, don't, ex, don't mistake movement for action, right? Just because you're doing something doesn't mean that you're moving your business forward. We know what those, you know, five things are that we're supposed to be doing. You're not, remember my back of the page, the things are on the back of the page. Those are, those are leverage things. <laughs> Then we go back to what Gary tells us in the MREA. Lee, this is where you were going, Annie. Three things, leads, listings, and leverage. These are the three things that are going to guarantee your success. And Jessica is the leverage. So you were talking about websites, Jessica. Go ahead and just kind of tell them your favorite things. My favorite things as far as what that do you are you offering right now that would be most helpful? Like, oh, you know. I think honestly, by far, what is the most helpful for you guys are probably Facebook ads. Um, which is the main thing I really wanted to come on and talk to you guys about today. Um, I think it's the most important thing for you guys because it's an easy and inexpensive way to get leads. Um, and I'm going to show you guys an ad today. The biggest feedback I get is, well, I don't have any listings. What am I going to advertise? Because obviously those ads do really well because it's a supply and demand thing. People want to look at homes. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do an ad that you don't need any listings for. Anybody can run this ad. Um, it's super simple. Um, you can run it for yourself or you can hire our team to run these for you. Um, and I'm going to go through one that we ran. I think she's a supported agent that we ran for her yesterday. Um, but again, so like you were saying websites. So I just took the Nick Baldwin class and I was really surprised at all the functions that our websites have. Um, and all the ways that make them different. Like they have, they're integrated with Google, Nextdoor, um, and a couple other websites where all the information that you find on your KW website when you're searching properties, um, they would have to go to like five or six different websites to get all that information. So I thought that was pretty cool. So if it's okay, I'm gonna go through and walk you guys um, through how to build this Facebook ad. Um, and if you guys have any questions, just interrupt and we can pause. Um, I'll go as slow or as fast as you want, okay? All right, anything else before I start that, Carla? Good. Oh, okay. that's awesome. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Cynthia. Wait, yeah, Cynthia is waving What her was that class that you said you took that you got all that info from? Yeah, so he's doing, I took, this was the first iteration of it. Um, this version was called $3 million in 90 days, but he's renamed it and now re-releasing it. And I think it's 1 million a month with Facebook and command, um, but it's through Nick Baldwin. 
Um, it's a relatively inexpensive class. It was less than 300 for three weeks, um, but he really goes in depth. It's a, in depth, it's a live class. Um, so you can ask questions and um, he's got a lot of good content. So I, I thought it was really worth it. And this was just his first round. So I'm sure each round gets better. Okay. Thank you. Hello, I have You're a quick welcome. question. I'll have a link, Cynthia. I'll, I'll, I'm going to figure out how to send it to you. Oh, okay. Jessica, is there a link or a template for the uploading of CSV files in command? There is. So... Um, gosh, I've had it saved on my computer for so long, but I imagine if we go to answers.kw.com and search command import template, I bet we would find it somewhere. Okay. Um, I'll go there uh, real quick and see. I just had to. it saved on my computer for since command started. You don't have to do that. I'll find it. I just wanted to know if there was a sort of a path to get there. Well, email me if you don't find it. Okay. okay. I'd be happy to send yeah. even a copy of what I have. We'll Jessica, mm -hmm. Jessica, this is Courtney. I'm from Columbus, Ohio, as Hi, well Courtney. as Gretchen. Hi. And um, I'm just wondering if you could, is this that you're about to talk about applicable for Facebook or applicable for stuff going on in your market center as opposed to ours? No, this is national. Okay. Anybody can do this anywhere. All right. Any state. And in addition to that, Courtney and Gretchen, you guys can you guys can talk to Jessica will help you as well. So okay. because she's in Indy doesn't mean it's just like me. She's just like me. She works anywhere. Yeah. Right now we're in Indiana, Kentucky and Georgia. So we'd love to add Ohio to our map. So just let me know if you guys need any help. Okay, great. Okay. You guys have the links. So somebody check that link that I put in there and see if it works for you to find the Nick Baldwin class. All right, so if you wanna follow along, go ahead and log into your command. And I'm going to share my screen here while you're doing that. Just give me a second, I have a million things up. So let me find the right thing here. Okay, so do you see my command screen versus a spreadsheet? Yes. You see my command screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, awesome. So first you'll log into your command. Um, go to campaigns. And then we're going to click on paid ads. Okay, so from this screen, you'll see um, previous ads that you've ran. You'll see your current um, Sometimes this will be, you'll see a draft versus active. Um, so this is the one that we started yesterday. Um, to make a new one at the top right, you're gonna click create campaign. And you can choose any of these options. Um, I, to get the best results out of social ads, to be honest, I've only ran a few Google ads. Um, I think there's a big benefit as far as the number of leads you get in the price per lead if you stick with just Facebook. Um, and part of that is because of the relationship that Keller Williams has with Facebook, which is unique to the other um, ad platforms as far as I know. So since we all go through command, Facebook sees us as one client spending thousands of dollars versus 180 separate clients spending hundreds of dollars. So we get a special lead form um, when people click your ads. They don't have to actually fill out their information. It just pops up auto-filled and they just hit OK. So that piece alone gives you more ads because it's a hurdle for them to put in information. That's like a stopping point. And if they don't have to actually put in anything, if their information's already there, you know, they're more likely to go on to the next step. So I choose social ad. Um, for this campaign, we're going to call it recently reduced in Indy. So I'm going to show you guys how to run an ad for recently reduced properties in Indy that will pull up the correct list anytime they click on your ad. Um, and it's going to lead them to your agent website. Okay. So recently reduced in Indy is the title. We want to attract buyers. 
My preference is Facebook only. Um, you certainly can choose all three. Um, I just think you get better results again if you just put all your money in there. Now there's benefits to going to Instagram or Twitter as well. I just think be strategic about it. Um, if it's a much higher price point or a younger demographic, I might include Instagram as well. Um, that's just my thought on it. I think for the people who mostly use Facebook, that's like your 35 to 65. Um, to me, those are your bread and butter buyer and sellers. Um, obviously a lot of millennials are going to be on Instagram. Um, I think they're going to be more first time buyers on Instagram. Um, so for me, I just choose Facebook only and throw all my ad dollars there. So then you'll click create campaign. What did you click? I'm sorry. What create campaign. Can you go back to that? I can I need to see sure. it. may have to move your little picture box because it's going to it's I did I did I can see it now awesome okay so we clicked attract buyers then clicked Facebook and yes. then right here create campaign okay okay and so that will take you to the next screen where you can actually build out all the details of your ad um so for me I make all my graphics in Canva just because well, for our, for concierge, it's the easiest program and the most popular that you all agents probably have as well, or you're familiar with it. So when we send you templates, if you want to edit them, it's really easy for you to just edit in Canva or we'll make them in designs in command. And it's the same thing. You can go in and edit anytime. So what I would do is open a new window, go to Canva, create your graphic, um, I'll show you guys what I created for this one, if I can find it. Okay, so here's the graphic we created for this agent. So just simple, um, just get a stock photo of an interior of a home. I always like bright. I think it's positive and um, I don't know, something trendy on trend for the moment, something eye catching. So we just said price reductions, free list of recently reduced homes. Um, so just made the graphic nice and simple. Okay, so you will put in, I always like to start with the headline because um, that's kind of, I don't know, to me, it's the starting point. Um, you only get 25 characters. So you have to be careful because you can't, you really can't say a lot. So let's see if recently reduced in indie fits. Okay, it just fits. Okay, good. And let's see here. I think the last one we said, so just put in some kind of blurb about what they're getting. So the market is hot and yet you can still get a great deal. And then you need to give them the call to action. So click learn more and then kind of tease them with what they're gonna get. So click learn more for an exclusive list of recently whoops, reduced homes in Indianapolis. And then you can add emojis throughout. Um, they're eye catching, it's a good idea to add them. So you just click this little face and it'll pop up with your Facebook emojis. Okay. So we'll put, let's see, we'll add a little fire. Okay. And then for the description, that is not going to be shown everywhere. Okay. So this is just kind of secondary text. It will show in some placements. It will not show in others. Um, so make sure your main copy is your most important message. And then the description can just be supporting. So I typically just reiterate telling them to click the learn more button. Um, so click learn more to find a great deal is what we'll say. 
Okay, then you'll click save. Now, don't get confused just because this listing section is here, that's not required. So don't feel like you have to actually add a listing, you don't, okay? So then click down to media, and this is where you're going to add that graphic that you made in either designs or Canva. So you will click select media. You can add a video if you want. Um, we're just gonna add an image for this one. Um, you can browse your designs library if you've made something within command. Um, if you saved something to your computer, click upload image. And then you can just click right here and it'll bring you to your files. Does anybody, while this is loading, does anybody have any questions so far? I do. Um, sure. Courtney again from Columbus. Um, um, you know how you picked a, a template and it, you, you suggested picking a, a bright, contemporary, clean looking image. Mm -hmm. How is that? I mean, forgive me because like I'm old and I don't get it. So just bear with me. I, I guess I'm wondering why you didn't put an image of one of the reduced homes. That's a good question because the when they click your ad, that list is going to be changing every single day. And when they click the link, that list okay. is active and live. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're it's not you're not really false advertising. You're just putting something up there to catch to be eye catching. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. No, good question. Yeah, you wouldn't want to put one of the homes because they may not actually be on the list by the time they click right. your ad because we're going to set it to active only. Okay. But that's a good question. And just use, make sure, um, don't do a Google search um, and grab an image off the internet that way. If I were you, I would search free stock photos and find a website that gives free stock photos. That way you're not gonna be using a copyrighted image on accident. Well, what you did picking that image works too. I'm, what do you mean? Well, the image that you selected, didn't you find that in, in command? Um, I made this in Canva. So I just used a oh. free stock photo and inserted oh. it into Canva. Okay, got it. But we got can't it. take photos off of command. Like we can't save them and then use them in Canva. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you could. I think can okay. have some free stock photos in there. I just mean don't go Googling pretty yeah. house or something and then saving that photo because you could end up using somebody else's intellectual <laughs> property. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything you find in command designs is going to be a free stock photo. I just... I always go to Pexels. It's P-E-X-E-L-S. That's um, a free stock photo website or in Canva, if you're using that as well, they have free stock photos. How do you spell Canva? C-A-N-V-A. Thank you. You're welcome. And there's a free or a pro version. Um, honestly, I used to use the free for a couple years and it was just fine. So if you guys order any designs from us, like if you order an open house flyer or any type of flyer or a postcard and you, and you want it made through Canva, we're happy to. And then we just share the link with you and it's yours and you can edit it forever. Like I, we have people that'll have us do open house flyers or flyers to a neighborhood because a buyer really likes that neighborhood. So we can make the design and then send the link to you. And then you only pay one design fee. And then each time you want to reuse that flyer, you just hop in and change it yourself. So it's yours. Okay. Okay. Jessica, yeah. I love Canva. Mm -hmm. Jessica, do you find that you get more traction if you do a video versus a, a still image or does it matter? Do you think? Well, so I don't typically run videos in the ads um, just because all of the classes that I take, none of those people do either. So you do have the capability to do video, but I'm not kidding. This whole Nick Baldwin class, he didn't use video for any of the ads that he showed us. Um, and other, again, other classes I've taken, they don't really use the video function either. So okay. even though now... That being said, that's what the ads, when you're doing your own Facebook, um, video always beats picture. Sure. You know, so in okay. ads, as far as I know, I just don't really use video. Okay. Okay. 
All right, guys. So let's see here. So we've got our image um, and then we're going to hit preview and crop. Um, say you had an image that maybe was wide, I would change it to crop to square just because that's going to show up correctly in most placements. Um, when it's on their phone, it's going to be a square and most people are looking on their phone. So to avoid having part of your picture cropped off, I would pick square. Um, so you hit save image. For this one, I think we only need one image. You could put a couple if you wanted, but again, I think one is enough. Um, and then for this one, I put a KW here and obviously her market center logo is over top. So if you ever run into that over here, you can change your DBA logo position to the other side. Okay, so we just moved it over. Okay, um, I'll hit save for media and then Facebook settings. So you're going to pick your business page. You may have multiple if you've connected multiple to your command. Um, so pick which business page you want this to run through. Then you want to make sure to pick Facebook lead generation form. And that's what I was telling you guys about that's unique to KW. Um, that's going to have their information already in there versus making them actually type it out. So don't ever, ever, ever choose site or landing page unless you don't really want very many leads. That's kind of how I look at it. Um, so the button label, uh, I just normally keep learning more. If it applies to your ad, you can click sign up or apply now. Um, unless it's an event, I never ever would choose sign up because people are a little averse to that. They don't want more junk mail. They don't want signed up for another newsletter. Um, so I would just keep it with learn more. And then the website URL, this is where they are going to be directed to after they click your ad. So you're going to pull up your agent website. So we'll just go in a new window. Where are we at here? Okay, so this was that agent's website. So you're going to go to your agent website. Um, we said recently reduced in Indie. Say you're running an ad for recently reduced in a certain zip code, whatever the area is, you just search it in your website. So we're going to search Indianapolis, choose Indianapolis, and then it's going to pull up the map of just the whole city, everything that's going on. Okay. You're going to want to click this button for sale and uncheck everything except for the actives, okay? And make sure it doesn't say for rent. Obviously we don't wanna include that. So actives only. And then if you wanna show a certain price point, like you could say recently reduced under 500 or whatever, you can click these and change them to be any criteria that you advertise these people were gonna get, okay? So I'm just gonna leave all of this alone and then click more. I'm not going to change any of this year built lot size. I just want a really nice big list. Scroll all the way down and you can click price reduce less than seven days ago. Okay, so you'll toggle that on. And now this is um, your map of all the listings that have been recently reduced. You're going to go up here and whoops, select that whole link. Okay. Copy that link and then, okay. One thing I wanna point out, when you click this uh, area here, this HTTPS shows up that wasn't there before. You have to delete that because when you paste your new link, it's gonna have that HTTPS and it'll be double and it'll say it's a bad link. So I wanted to point that out because I, it took me like, three or four times when I was new to figure out what was going on. So I just want to save you guys a little headache. You have to delete that part first, and then you can put in your, your website or your link to your website. Okay, so you can leave it, um, the radius and the location to be the default, or you can change it. So we're going to change it from Greenwood to Indy um, because that's what we're advertising. So use custom settings. We'll toggle that on. Here, we're gonna X out Greenwood, Indiana, and we're gonna search for Indianapolis. And then you can change your radius 
to be as wide as you want. I wouldn't change this to be any more than tw outside 20 miles outside the Indy area. Um, the, the bigger radius you get, um, I think you're going to get less leads. I think it's good to keep it a pretty local, a smaller radius because they're going to blast that Facebook places your ad for you. And I think you're going to get a more dense placement that way. So that's just my advice. You could do it however you wanted, but I think you would get better, um, leads, a better amount of leads if you keep it a smaller radius. All right, Jessica, so we'll, I don't yeah. mean to interrupt, but no, please do. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm asking a lot of questions, but no, interrupt we, anybody who has questions. When you uh, choose your Facebook page, I know we had a conversation the other day how I was only getting five or six people to to see my posts on my business page. Would you would that attract more attention there, or should I do it with my personal page? Well, you have to do it for your business one. Okay. okay. Yeah, it won't let you do ads for your personal. Um, but that would be a good thing for you to do because it'll, the people don't have to know you or have liked your page to see this. Gotcha. Um, whereas on your, so on your regular posts, they have to have liked your page. And even if they did, Facebook may not place your post in front of them. Okay, great. Thank so, you. Yeah, this would be a great idea. Can I add something? You can Please. post it on your business page and then share it to your personal page. Yeah. And that's a note for everybody. Okay. Um, that's a really good thing to do because every time you share it or comment on a post, it's Facebook is going to consider it more popular. So not only is it going to get in front of more people through you sharing it, but Facebook is more likely to show your things to more people itself. So yeah, that's a good comment, Ian. Yeah. Any other questions before we move on? We're almost done. Okay, awesome. Um, so the last thing is duration and budget. So click to open that tab. It's going to make you choose tomorrow. Um, Facebook will take up to 24 hours to review your ad. And I think they're mostly just looking for fair housing violations. Um, us and lenders, probably other people too, but they kind of look at your ads a little closer um, because we have those type of regulations. Um, so you're going to choose tomorrow's date or beyond if say you want to set it for later. Um, and then I always suggest 10 days at $30. That's what Keller Williams suggests as well. Um, if you do it too short, you're not going to get good results because now I've never really heard a good reason why, but they say it takes a few days to start ramping up and to start actually getting leads coming in. So if you run it for just say three or five days, you're really only getting a couple days where you could expect any leads. I've so heard why. can I, can I throw that in? Yeah. And you guys think about this when you're on Facebook, right? You see the ad once and you just skip over it. You see that the second time, the little something in your brain is like, I've seen that before, right? It's that reticular <laughs> activator. When you see it the third time, or whatever time it is, that's why. So if you only run it for a couple of days, they don't get that repetition on their feed. Yeah, and that makes sense. That, that makes sense. So on okay. the other side, don't run it for too long because say that ad's not performing well, Facebook was not gonna refund you. So if you say, hey, run this for 50 days at 500 bucks, and, and it's not doing well, you just have to either cancel it and you won't get refunded or you just have to let it ride out. So I like to keep no more than 10 just because if it's not performing well, then let's switch something. If it is performing well, well, then we can just repeat it. Okay, so, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, what is the 10 days and $30 mean for sure? Does that mean that the Ad will run for 10 days period, or does Correct. that mean up to 10 days? No, that means it will run for 10 days. So Facebook will take 10 days placing your ad the best it can to try to get the best results for you based on an algorithm. And it will spend all that $30 is your ad dollars. So it will spend all of that money for you placing ads and then that's where you get the leads and cost per lead. It's basically however many leads you ended up with, um, your total spent divided by your leads. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Hey, Jessica, I have a question. Yeah. 
Um, so I've never done it this way. I've just like boosted my posts on Facebook. I've done it directly through Facebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but do when I do it that way, I have an option to choose like my audience. Do you have an option in here to choose your audience at all? You or? do. I just honestly don't use that. Um, okay. I skip it because I don't want to leave. I don't know. I just have, in my experience, I've not really needed to do that. I know that that's something that some people do. Like we've done one where we targeted car enthusiasts. If it's something special, if it's a, you know, a special situation, then yes, put that in there. But generally I don't put in the interest. Okay. Yeah. It it's more like, help. It's, it's more like age range and um, geographical area and stuff like that. Yeah. And they are not cool with age stuff. Like I've had ads, I've picked age ranges before and had ads turned down because you can't discriminate based on age with housing. Um, okay. So I just don't, oh, Facebook yeah. is always changing their behind the scenes stuff. So I try to keep it as simple as I can. Okay. But if it works, just not doing it. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So what's the difference between running it for $30 versus 50 or 20 or whatever that may be? You are just going to get more placements. So obviously the more money you want to throw at it, the better. Um, I just always think of it like these ads, it's always an experiment because Facebook's always changing the algorithm. So an ad that might have performed well before might not perform well in the future. Um, so for me, I just don't like to throw too much money at it because you're not going to get a refund. I right. have seen ads where like we've had, somebody has asked me to run an ad where I thought, well, I don't know that this is going to be, you know, get you very many leads, but we'll run whatever. Um, and they wanted to spend upward. It was over a hundred bucks and they didn't get any leads. So nothing is guaranteed. Now that normally does not happen. I mean, that one sticks out because it's so rare that you wouldn't get leads. Um, but it can happen just because you put money into it. If you're not running a smart ad, you'll get nothing. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Um, do you use hashtags? I may have missed that part, but do you use hashtags in your uh, description to draw no. in people? I don't think that's a bad idea. I don't know why you wouldn't, but it's like the video thing. I've never used it and I've never seen anybody in a class suggest it. So I try to just stick to their formulas because they get really good results um, and it's getting, gotten us really good results. Um, like for this one, we'll go back and look at the last ad um, we did for this girl. While she's going back, if you're going to run Instagram, I've, I've heard that if you're going to run an Instagram, run it on Instagram, that's where you want to add hashtags because Instagram is very hashtag centric, but Facebook doesn't do anything with hashtags. I mean, you can't even, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not how you search to find things. So that, that's what I've heard in the past. Yeah. And we don't, honestly, my team doesn't really work a whole lot in Instagram yet. Um, we're still trying to familiarize, but we're not really, as far as Instagram goes, that's not really our forte, but it is the future, I think. And we all need to be learning it and jumping on the bandwagon. I think that's the big next thing. Um, but it, see right here. Okay. So I'm going to show you, this is what it looks like after you run your ad. Um, so she had two so eight leads for two dollars and fifty cents a lead and she only spent 20 bucks um and this one actually is kind of a fluke because she only we only ran it for three days so if we had ran that for 10 imagine how many leads she would have had uh, probably a lot more than eight but that still was a pretty good result for her um Okay, so let me back up. Were there any other questions as far as building the ad? And then I want to show you guys where you can access your leads and how you're going to actually find your leads and contact them. So any other questions about entering your ad, anything like that? Jessica, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. Um, I just lost the screen you were on, but so it said 44 clicks with Facebook, all of those automatically, you get their information, correct? Well, not with the clicks. 
So I'll, I'll show you when I go back to that screen. That's a good question. Does anybody okay. have any other questions about any of these sections here or as far as building out the ad? I just have one more. I'm sorry. I'm no, asking a lot, but um, is there a certain way to do, I know it's probably the same process, but like for listing uh, to attract listings and sellers, would you use like a, an office listing that's sold in a day or something and then just advertise it that way maybe or, or how would you well so that's tough because one thing you do want to avoid in your marketing is dead messages so a year or two ago sold in one day was a very attractive message but right now i feel like that's just noise because everything's selling in one day it's not really saying a whole lot right you know right. um listings to be honest that's the hardest uh fishing for listings is the hardest ads to run um the most success we've had is using like an aspirational listing so something in a price point where somebody's going to be moving up into or they it's going to be so attractive i'm never going to even afford that home but i'm so interested i'm still going to click on that ad okay right. so those people are they're still buyers but you get their listings because they have a home to sell Gotcha. Um, you know, to buy. So that's why you have to use a higher price point or something that's a move up, like definitely not an entry or first time home buyer okay. type of property. Gotcha. Um, but you. yeah, to be honest, getting listings through these ads, um, it's the probably the most difficult yeah. right now. I imagine you get a lot less uh, per, per dollar for that amount for buyers, I'm sure. Yeah, buyer... Yeah, buyer leads are definitely a lot easier to come by. But it's not just Facebook ads, right? That's just kind of how it's been for a while. So, all right, guys, any other questions about building the ad or ad content? Okay, cool. So I'll go back. We'll just save that as a draft. Oh, well, this brings up something kind of like a weird glitch that I'll mention. So I just went to hit save draft and it gave me an error um, because of the start date. Um, it's just a weird little glitch. If you guys save your ads as drafts and then go back in and re-edit them, sometimes certain fields will revert or just change and you'll have to change them back. So that's just a little oddity. Um, just to point out. So you just have to change it back to tomorrow's date, hit save, and then save the draft again. Okay, so Amber, um, you were asking about like the price per click, like these numbers here. Yes. Okay, so impressions is basically placements. Um, so we're all, who, how many people actually swiped through it? Um, clicks is how many people clicked the ad. So they click the ad and their form pops up with all of their information and then they have to hit okay to move on. So 44 people clicked the ad, but only eight of those people clicked okay to actually move on. Okay, perfect. That makes sense. Does that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, any other questions about this screen? And then I'll kind of dig into finding your leads. Okay. So as leads come in, they're going to automatically notify you through your Kelly app. So make sure your notifications are turned on through that um, because the number one piece of advice everybody will tell you about internet ads is it's very important to respond to their that lead within like two or three minutes. So time is of the essence. They're on, they're clicking. If you don't get to them, some they're probably in other agents ad services and they're going to get to them first. So it's important to get to them as soon as you get that notification. Um, when I was on the team, we taught our agents, whenever you're comfortable answering, answer it. Even if it's, if it's 11 and they do it and you want to text them and say, Hey, I saw you looked at a home. That's appropriate to me because if they're up searching, they're up searching, you know, it's not like we just randomly sent a midnight text. Um, do whatever you're comfortable with. I wouldn't actually pick up the phone and call at midnight, but I think a text or an email is totally appropriate. Um, so anyway, to get your list of ads, so you can actually click this eight leads and it'll bring you up um, the list of all of those people that came in through that specific ad. 
So it's not all of your leads total. It's just the people that clicked on that ad. So I don't want to spend, this is an actual agent's lead list. So I don't want to spend too much time really inside of it. Um, but you can click in there. It's your list of leads. It has their information. Um, so then you can go through and just call each person, you know, if you want to do follow-ups once a day or however, however you do it. Um, another way that you can find your leads, say you want to find your leads from every lead source, not just that particular ad. Um, you can go to your contacts. And then you can do filters, click lead, whoop, click leads only, apply. And then it's just your leads, no matter where they came from. Okay, so any questions the, about that? Can you go back to the filter real quick and let me have you show them something? Yeah. You can also go there and you can filter every lead that like if you haven't checked and you haven't followed up with your leads like it's nine in the morning and you want to see what came through last night. You can filter your leads and then there's a place there where you can say uh, created. Oh, back in the filter again. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going too far. Yeah. See down there. It says created under tags. So you can click on the created under tags yeah there you go created and then within the last one day and it's going to give you all of your leads that came in in the last day so she didn't have any come in but if you had an ad running and kelly has told you you've had three or four leads because you want to set them up on a smart plan and and don't forget there is in your smart plan library there is a facebook lead follow-up smart plan that i created um, and I can show you guys how to get there if you end up running ads so that you can automatically get them set up on the smart plan. So thanks, Jessica. Sorry. I just wanted to share that as no, well. No, thank I you. I actually didn't know that. That's an easy way to go in and pick your, you know, your most recent ones to make sure you get them on a smart plan. Yeah, that's cool. I, you taught me something. I didn't know that. I had never used that. Um, okay. So any other questions guys about the leads portion? I know that's a lot of stuff, but really just, it's not as hard as you might think, um, just to put it in there, put a little money on your first one. Um, if it does well, repeat it, um, or just call me and I'm happy to do all of that for you. I mean, cause really it would take you an hour maybe or more. Um, so what's your time worth? You know, we're happy to do the ad for you. And what, what is your charge for that dear? So our ads are between, between 10 and 20, um, which is really inexpensive, you know, to get it ran for you. Um, so the ones that are 10, that would be like, if you're just advertising a listing, cause we're not creating a graphic, um, it's a very simple ad to run. Um, this ad would have been about $20. And then if there's something really crazy that you want to do, talk to me, it may be a little bit more if it's really involved, but we can get creative and most of your requests we can make happen. Awesome. So think about that. $20 it take you. And if it's a successful ad, if you had a really great idea or you just want to take this one, because we know this one's a really great idea. Remember, success leaves clues and R&D is absolutely acceptable at Keller Williams. So, so yeah. if it runs really well, you pay $20 and you can just rerun that same ad over and over and over again. You don't have to change it, right? So it's not right. just $20 one time and done if it works. And if it doesn't work, I'm sure you could get with Jessica and figure out tweaks that you could make. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And don't feel, again, the biggest feedback I get from agents is, well, I want to run an ad, but I don't have any listings. So other topics that you can advertise are homes between, you know, this price and this price and a sought after area you know, so you don't have to have any listings for that. And you run the ad much the same way. You just go to the agent website, pull that search, um, and then insert that link into your ad. So, okay. Any other questions before I let you guys move on to your, to your other stuff? I'm sorry. I have one more. No, you're fine. <laughs> so, um, I'm the KW logo. Um, can we like upload that to our Canva? And where do we find it? I know I've been on designs and found one there. Um, but I mean, where, where do we get that? 
So you could download that from designs. Okay. And upload it into Canva. If it's a white background, Canva has, well, I have pro, I think this is a feature for everybody, but they have a feature where you can remove the background. So if you pull the logo and it's not a transparent background, you can just remove it. Here, you can okay. also go to mykw.kw.com. Okay, and then you just go to, oh, I went to, I went, I did it. So you go to marketing and then you go to logos and branding. Okay. And you can, first of all, read the identity and style guide. This is gonna tell you what you can and cannot do with your logos. Very important to, to do that. Um, and then you can put in your market center number and you can download the entire packet and it's gonna come with the white background. It's gonna come in every different permissible use of the KW logo is gonna be here. So, so you can you can do that as well. Thank, Thank you. you, Carla. I hadn't gone there ever. And what's that webpage again? It's your mykw.kw.com. You know, I don't know how you get to command. That's how I go to command. I go to mykw.kw, same place where you go to get your white pages, your reports, um, those kind of things. So I was under the impression that if we were using the logo, we needed to use the each office as independently owned and operated. But I don't see that in this ad. I would recommend that you read the style guide and it's going to tell you when and when you don't have to use that each office is the style guide is going to tell you when and when you don't have to. Thank you. All right. Any other Thank questions? You, guys? Jessica for spending an hour with us on Saturday. We so oh, appreciate it. And so don't forget you got in the chat and, and if you came in late and you don't see it in your chat and you want it, I can share it. It's the menu of services that, that my leverage solutions offers on an a la carte basis. And if you heard it today, if you want something that's not on the list, talk to her. Yep. Uh, Jessica, if there's supported agents, you, you had a change in schedule to make sure everybody knows about? Yeah, if you're a supported agent, um, the weekly Q&A has been moved to Thursdays at 11. Um, I know that some of you are probably dual career. So if you ever um, have any questions or need any help with anything and you can't make it to that um, 11 o'clock, you can just shoot me a text or um, go to my Calendly link. It's just calendly.com slash Jessica Riley and we can set up a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I like to keep you guys together because all the time, you guys probably notice in this group as well, somebody asks a question that you didn't even think of, but you're appreciative that you were there to hear the answer. Um, so I like for you guys to come to that session, if at all possible, if it's a question that can wait. Um, obviously, if it's an emergency, you know, reach out. I can schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. All right. Thank you, guys. I look forward to seeing all of you again. Thank you, dear. Have a great Thank weekend. You, you too. Bye-bye. Gretchen, I saw your post. You're leaving. You got a showing. Yes. So, so we're hoping we tell get in everybody your win for the week real quick before you go. Um, I'm under contract and we're supposed to close on Tuesday. So tell, them, the tell them what time. happened. So to give them the real quick synopsis, like you went on the market and it didn't work out and go, go quick. Yeah. So uh, we put it on the market. We got a couple offers. One she accepted. It didn't work out because they decided to negate the contract for many reasons. So then we we're going to just take it off while she worked on the thing she needed to fix. And I was like, well, let me just put it back on the market while we're waiting, while you're fixing all that stuff. And then two days later, I got multiple offers and one that she really likes. So what that waived all those things that waived she was working all. on. Yes. Waived all the things she was working. I think she's still in denial. She's like, wait, I don't have to. I'm like, nope. And it they was a seven, seven day cash offer, seven day close, cash seven offer. Seven day close, all cash asking. So, no contingencies. So just remember, sometimes you get your low, you know, you get, you get, you, you, tenacity pays off, right? And sometimes when we have disappointment, what we get on the other side of it is a positive thing, right? So, and you know what's weird is I had a little intuition voice in my head saying, you know what, just put it back on, just, just see where it goes. And it, I glad I listened. <laughs> Love it. Awesome, dear. All right. Well, I hope that you found that helpful with Jessica. I mean, I just, um, you know, leverage is such a big deal. And um, Facebook ads are a cheap, easy way. If you're running out of people to call, 
to talk to. It's a cheap, easy way. And remember, those leads are going to convert as somewhere about one per hundred, right? But think about this. If you spend, let's say you're getting $2 a lead, okay? You spend $200 and you get one transaction. What percentage is that of your commission? Depends on how much your commission is, right? But let's say it's a $6,000 transaction and it costs you $200 to get that lead, right? So just, just think about the Facebook ads. They're there um, um, and, and super easy. And then I also put in the chat that Nick Baldwin class that she took. I've heard great things about that class and it starts July 28th. Carla, I, I'm, I pulled up my Kelly uh, app and like there's nothing there. Like I hit my profile and it says there's no profile loading. Um, notifications, when you hit that, the screen just goes blank. Is there a problem with my app or what? Um, to get those leads, I'd have to have that working. Not necessarily. So Kelly is gonna send you a message and tell you that you have a lead, but okay. it's gonna show up in your command whether your Kelly app is working or not. Okay. I'm spinning right now, so I don't know. That. It could be that they're working on it today. Yeah, I was told, like, even through um, tech, <clears throat> whoever does our technical stuff for our um, command platform, that the Kelly app was, like, not very, we don't use it very often through the command. No, no, it's not. It doesn't do a whole lot yet. It doesn't do a whole lot. I don't, I shouldn't say yet, because I don't know what the plan is. But you're going to get a message from Kelly telling you you okay. have to be. Okay. I mean, that just happens. It's just, it just, it doesn't matter whether your app works or not. Okay. And your app really, I've never gone through my app to get the lead. I always go back into command like I showed you because I want to call yeah. them and make sure I get them on a smart plan and you got to be in command for that. Great. Thank you. There is a link at the bottom of the Kelly app to take you to command on your phone. Okay. Thank you. Yes. How does that message come through? Does it email you? Does it? Text you or what? It's just a push. So it shows, it just shows up on my home screen. I don't, I don't know. It just pushes out just like anything else that pushes out to you to tell you. So you have a, I should check command every few minutes. I don't know about every few minutes, but you should check command on, well, you're going to get a little red. You'll know in command, right? Cause the little, um, the little blue thing that comes up on your phone. So yeah, like, also in command your the bell at the top. You know where the little bell is where you get messages oh, right yeah. here up at the top. You're gonna know when you have a new lead because first of all, it's gonna show up, it's gonna tell you on your phone that you have a new lead. And then here there's gonna be a little a, a dot on the bell. And when you click here, it's gonna tell you that you got this new lead and it was been entered. Then you can just click on that person right there and then. Or just like I said um, with Jessica, you know, at the end of the day or at noon or, you know, two or three times a day, you can go in and check your contacts and you just go in and filter. And then it's the created within, you know, the last one day. And then it's gonna show you all the, all the it, it's gonna show you everyone, right? If you added some leads, they're gonna show up as well. Like if you manually added leads, but, um, but that's that's how that works. Okay. I have a sorry. I have yes. a question. So um, I added some leads to my smart plan, and it's a couple of things. I'm a little annoyed with the Kelly app with that. It'll say that you have a new app, a uh, new lead, but if I'm not by my computer, I can't really do much. So with the Twilio, I do have a Twilio account with Twilio. Um, it's like I can't get to the lead in a good amount of time when I'm out doing showings when they come in. How can I like combat that? So in your Kelly app, when it tells, in your, if it tells you you have a lead in your Kelly app, right next to home in the bottom, the very next thing is command. And if you click on command, it's going to take you into your command and then you can go into your contacts and you can filter it the exact same way. So you're going to look for your, in your Kelly app, you're going to look for your lead what that was created in the last day so you, you just use command on your phone okay i didn't know when i look at the lead it doesn't say it says to view and i don't see um anywhere where you can go to command from there well, i don't no, have you like a go into your kelly app so go go into the app you know the blue and white kw it's hard for yeah. me to show on zoom but if you go into your kelly app um at the very bottom 
next to where it says um, command, uh -huh. right? Then you're going to click on, there's a button that says command. And when you click on command, it's going to take you to command on your phone. Okay. Yeah, I know what she's saying. I've done the same thing. I've clicked view and, and it just says ask Kelly. Yeah. But well, I see now. Okay, thank yeah. you. Sometimes we just have to wire around it. They, they are working on the technology glitches. I was on a leadership call on Monday and I think they were in the 80%. They did a 66 day stability challenge trying to clean up all the bugs. So they're, they're working on it. I mean, you think about the technology and the number of agents on the platform and the fact that it was brand new. You know, it's not like we got a Microsoft product that had already been beta tested, right? We, we have been beta testing it as since it you know, came into existence, so. So are you, okay, this, this is a related but non-related question. So since we're, it looks like we're trying to go more like cloud-based, kind of like EXP, and of course I get EXP calls all the time, but is this something that Keller Williams is starting to get more towards um, being more cloud-based like EXP and just kind of being progressive in that way? Uh, it's not really like EXP. So EXP has to be cloud-based because they don't have an in-person presence at all. Um, so that's their value proposition. And that's all they have is this avatar thing and the online. But Gary Keller, technology is the way of our business. It's the way of the future. So Gary Keller said a couple of years ago that we are now a technology company, um, not, a, um, not a real estate company. So we're a technology company that's focused on real estate. So what they've done for us, so we aren't bolt on, nobody owns our data. Gary created our own platform. So Kelly is very much like Siri or the A word, which you cannot say because she gets excited, but that's an artificial intelligence platform. So all of the information that you put into command about your opportunities, for instance, you know how I've told you in the past that right now your probable and potential income um, is calculated based on industry or other agents averages but if you consistently lose your use your opportunities eventually command will be able to tell you what your conversion ratios are and then you can set smart goals based on what you actually do in your market with your schedule and your activities so we have this artificial intelligence platform and command is built on top of it um, and other things will be built on top of it as well so so yes, we have, well, I, I would say having been introduced to what EXP has to offer, I would say our technology is far better than their technology, but, and that's all they have to offer. That's their value proposition. You know, they talk about revenue share, like it's a big deal. Well, we have profit share and guess what? You don't have to go out and recruit um, and take time away from your own business because you have team leaders that will recruit for you and put people in your profit share. So it, EXP, that, that's why they are recruiting all the time. That's really all they have, right? Those agents are working towards being recruiters and not towards being realtors. Sorry, that was a side note because EXP got me excited. <laughs> I know every time I bring that up, I'm, I already know, especially the whole competitive EXP and KW is because I've uh, of course had people say, things to me about their bonuses with their revenue shares and stuff like that but because of the cloud base that they have and what their technology is looking like I didn't know what would be you know the more benefits with that because we are still combating Kelly and command Kelly is not different than command Kelly is just the artificial intelligence platform that command is set on the Kelly app is the, it's the app that is that we're with that we're talking about the issues with it's not kelly itself right it's just the app so and the app's really not necessary and i think maybe that's where they made the mistake was creating the kelly app in the first place because you can go straight to command right so you get the messages when you get a new lead come in you can run a facebook ad the lead shows up in your command right period um and then it's a, it's a, it's a matter of skill and with any technology platform you have to educate yourself on how to use it so, yeah, and I want to talk about that here for a minute, because apparently when we talked about the logos and everything, I want to go through, this wasn't what I planned today, but I would like to go through, if it's okay with you, I'd like to go through your mykw.kw.com so you know what's here, right, and you know where your resources are, because what one of the parts of being successful is knowing what your resources are and how to get those answers, Lakeisha, like you're looking for, so 
Carla, so yes, no. we have, Carla. yes. I, I'm, I'm very sorry to interrupt, but I just need to ask really quick. Um, in our market center, there's, it's growing so fast and there's not a lot of resources in terms of face-to-face -face people to ask these questions to. So you said my agent dot kw dot something. It's my kw dot kw dot com. It's on the screen right here. You can see that this is your home screen. This is your this is your hub, right? This is this is your hub. This is where you logged in originally to create your bio. Um, this is where all your reports lie. Um, this is where your white pages are. If you wanted to find an agent or some contact information somewhere else. So it's mykw.kw.com. Hey, Courtney, which office are you in? Yours. In mine? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we have the same issues, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> um, yeah. But thank you for validating that. Um, the, the, and, and there's also been myagent.kw something or other as opposed to mykw.kw.com, my agent. I mean, there are times when I'm so frazzled, I don't even know how to get into know the what that. I'm not thinking of what that is, Courtney. So I don't okay. use anything that's my agent. Now my productivity coaching, right, is mykwpc.com. That's your resource library. Your PC library with productivity coaching is mykwpc.com. And Keen and I, this is ironic that we're having this conversation because Keen and I are working on a resource guide to send out to everyone so you know what your resources are. So, you know, if for instance, you need something and I'm not available 24 seven, unfortunately. Right. So if you need something, you know where to go. Okay, so let me just give you a little overview of mykw.kw.com. So you should have a picture here. If you don't have a picture here, you haven't set up your profile and you need to do that, okay? So you're just gonna go to profile and it's gonna tell you. You can't get to 100%. I'm OCD or something and it bugs me that it's only 97%. <laughs> I cannot get to 100%. I have tried everything and I can't get to 100%. So um, don't freak out. If you can't get to 100%, I've been that. told by the technology director that it's impossible, so. Um, he might have just told me that to make me shut up. I don't know, but you know. No, they changed some things with uh, KW, so they won't be doing 100% anymore. Yeah, maybe that's it. Okay, so so if you haven't set up your profile, set up your profile. Okay, your reports. These are really really important. If some of you guys a couple weeks ago, oh, all right, look, we got a problem today, and it happens, right? Technology ha happens this way all the time. So I can't get to the reports module today. They must be doing something with the reports. They they do these things on the thing, but your your reports are going to have your where you are in production right now. Your trend report. So on Monday after they get done, whatever their updates are, go in and click on reports and see what you get. Right, and we can go through this. Maybe next week we'll go through reports. Okay, education. This is going to take you to KW Connect. On KW Connect, you're going to be able to go up here to technology. And in technology, you can go to tech enabled agent. If you go to tech enabled agent, you're going to be able to find all kinds of command things that you need. Okay. It's going to tell you how to get started. It's going to have, you can click down here and say, what do I want? What do I want to work on? Right. Command my applications. Now I can say, what do I want to do? Do I want to work on smart plans? You know, this is in addition to Marty Miller. I think Marty Miller makes this a lot easier, but this is what KW has put together for you. So this was designed by the people that created command. And that's what's so cool about it. So all that information is there for you. The other thing that's really cool about KW Connect is you can search. Now, this is that rabbit hole that I've told you and why I created the PC library for you. So let's say you wanted to search smart plans. You're gonna click on search on smart plans and it's gonna give you everything. Anybody can upload into KW Connect to share. This is the R&D thing, you know, rip off and duplicate. So you're gonna get, the first thing you're gonna get is some, um, just, you just have to go look through here. Like here, if you wanna read it in French, you can do the Marty Miller smart, Marty Miller 66 day challenge, day 19 in France, French if you really wanna brush up on your foreign language skills. Um, you can do all kinds of things at Keller Williams. Here is the order. So you get newest first or relevance. So you can find the most, most relevant. And I like to go to relevance instead of new first. So now I'm gonna find out how do I create a custom plan? 
okay? So that, that's technology. Um, resources, you know, just go in here and play around. If you wanna learn about profit share and how you can get a check on the 21st of every month, go in here and read about profit share. Um, there's also a training calendar. So anything you're looking for, you can find the training. You can also log into your command from here if you haven't. Um, this is gonna tell you about referrals and things like that. So there's lots and lots of information there. Um, if you're in Ignite, um, your materials are gonna be here. Um, so lots of different opportunities for education here. Okay, let's go back to the main screen. So the other thing is your white pages. I've mentioned this before. If you click on white pages, you can find an agent, a Keller Williams agent anywhere in the country. You can click on here and you can find them. Okay. So that's, that's the main things and then the resources, right? So this is where you're gonna find out about all the different resources that we have. And then under marketing, this is what I showed you earlier and I wanna make sure you know where that is. Here's your logos and branding. And this is where you let download your market center branding. It's where you also can get them out front magazine. You can find out what's new in designs. You can get some training on how to use designs. If you wanna use designs instead of Canva, you can do that right here with some training, smart plan training. So lots of things. Some, some of you guys were asking me about KW logo uh, apparel. You can use KW red label here, or you can, I sent you guys out a link for another one that I use, but lots, lots of information here. So if you haven't been on mykw.kw.com and you haven't explored, you know, take 10 minutes when you're sitting in front of the TV tonight with your laptop and, you know, go around and explore a little bit. Okay. Um, Annie's leaving for a show. You guys are just showing it, showing it. Maria's got a meeting. Okay. You guys are leaving me and we're getting to the good stuff. Cause here's what we got to talk about. We got to talk about the mid-year review. So you guys that are have to leave, I want you to come back and fast forward this video to 1020 and, and let's, and, and, and do this, do this exercise. Okay. Um, so everybody get out a piece of paper. We're gonna do a little exercise because it's mid-year. I mean, seriously, next week is July 1st. Is that not nuts? I mean, just nuts. I still haven't quite got over it. All right, so first thing I want you to do is I want you to write down your key accomplishments so far this week. So what are all the great things that you've done in the last six months? What goals did you achieve? And it may not be that somebody said to me this week, that people don't, some people don't like to do the wins and challenges at group coaching because they feel like they don't have any wins. And I promise you, if you think hard, you had a win this week, whether you, you may not have had a, a contract signed, you may not have had a closing, you, but you had a win, right? We have to find that win and, and then celebrate it. That's important thing that we find the win and celebrate. So I want you to think about what goals did you achieve? It might be personal goals. You know, it might be, um, you know, I have a goal that I'm going to do better about having my own personal time, like, you know, having Carla time. And so I can look back and see where was I successful at meeting that goal. So it doesn't necessarily have to be um, transaction based your goals. What things are you most proud of from the last six months? Um, so, so think on that for a minute and write down a few things. What you're most proud of, what goals you achieved, what are the great things you got done the last six months? Then after you do that, underneath that, I want you to write down what goals did you not, did you miss the mark on? What did you really want to get done this year? And when you look back at your last six months, maybe you just haven't quite got there. When you get done, does anybody have anything they wanna share?
I'll share mine. Yes, Jay. Um, one thing that I haven't done that I still want to do and, I, and I'm working towards is I wanted to get a rental before I left my job <laughs> for my backup so, uh, security. But um, since things are moving how they are. Hard thing in this market, Jay. <laughs> so I'm still moving forward though. To, to, to come. Awesome. Well, at the same time, tell me, what are you most proud of? What, what, what have you accomplished in the last six months that you're most proud of? Uh, in the last six months or since I've been with Keller Williams, I've had my second listen to actually uh, go get sold. So I feel like that's a good accomplishment to uh, be able to have that done. And my um, confidence in script, <clears throat> not just script practicing, but door knocking is a little, it has become more. Um, handling, handling objections is more. So I, ha having that confidence uh, in that part of it is, is, has improved. Love that. And and did you cap? You got to be super close if it didn't happen. Um, I'm not sure. I tell you. You're not sure. <laughs> well, I'm gonna send Deidre a message and find out. No, nah, I'm not sure. I, I'll, I'll worry about that when I get the next two uh, uh, under contract. Then I'll worry about capping. And then you'll know if you got 100 percent or not. I love that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right. Anybody else have something you want to share from that? Yes, Miss Shelley. I can. So I was feeling a little bit, uh, maybe, sorry for myself, uh, pitiful, because I wanted to be farther along than I was, but I actually think I'm right where I'm supposed to be. So I had said I wanted to sell 30, have 30 transactions this year. So, so far I've closed eight. I currently have four under contract and two have fallen apart. That's 14. Um, so pretty close to 15, which is half. That's uh, awesome. So actually, that's that's not bad. Uh, in my mind, I expected because I had such a good first quarter. My second quarter was super rocky. So, um, but I'm actually kind of at the halfway point. So that's good. Uh, I did cap, which I was uh, I was extraordinarily pleased when I capped. I was very pleased with myself, and um, and I like that I continue to learn things that are practical and beneficial. Uh, and this, what have I not done? Um, I really do think I would have been a little bit farther along, but second quarter was, was rough, I think for a lot of people. So, uh, I'm pleased that I am hanging in there and moving forward and, uh, getting better every day. So. Love it. Yeah. All right. Anybody All right. have something you want to share? Now, those of you that are new, you may not have one of your accomplishments would it be to get your license right i mean let's let's focus on wins right we let's not it's not we do not share well first of all we don't compare our insides to other people's outsides right because we don't know what their insides have in them right what's going on in their life that makes things either easier for them or harder no no comparison comparison is the thief of joy remember that every time you start comparing yourself or your activity or your anything to someone else that's the thief of joy do not go there and we also don't compare our chapter one to somebody else's chapter 10 or 20. you know shelly's been doing this for a while jay's been doing this for a while so if you're a brand new agent don't let that hold you back so let's celebrate what you have to celebrate and everybody that's got their license in the last six months should have on their list what they're most proud of that they got their license that they passed that god awful test right <laughs> that they that they have that they have started their new business so that make sure you focus on the positive here all right who's got some to share okay I'll, I'll go um so first of all i got to a financial place that i could retire which is great Yay! second of all i got my license um, however, uh, I'm not very good at retirement. So I unretired, I got my license and, uh, am taking off here. Uh, I'm seem to be doing pretty well with the bold and getting my connections in. I was able to get my first referral. Uh, believe it or not, it came from a clerk at the Dollar Tree. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, that means uh, he is intentionally having these conversations. I love that. Yes. Yeah, my wife and daughter are just amazed because every server we see, every clerk I run into, I'm making sure they've got a card. I'm asking if they know anybody, you know, who's buying or selling. Um, Can I interrupt know. real 
real quick back yeah. to when we were talking about you know profit share earlier yes wait staff if you have somebody who's extraordinarily good at uh customer service ask them this question have you ever considered becoming a realtor because i think you would be awesome at it and yeah. if they say yes all you have to do is send them to my career night i have career night twice a month and all they have to do is come to my career night and and we'll do that heavy lifting for you okay excellent uh i missed um you know i've had a couple buyers that were interested and when it came time for the appointment they put me off and oh we've changed our mind and one of them would have been a listing as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's starting to travel in his job and decided it's not time to do that. Um, and I meant to lose weight this year and I haven't done that. <laughs> awesome. Well, we have to make that part of your next 12 week plan then. What are you gonna do for that? That's your personal. When we set goals, you know, we also set personal goals. So I love that. Okay, who's next? Michelle? Hi. Am I next? Yes. Okay, so actually on my list, I do have licensed. It's my first thing. Yay. And then I have a buyer under contract, so that's cool. Yay. And then my miss the mark is no closings yet, but I'm being patient because you can't Man. expect. I'm just an impatient person, though. You got to learn, learn in bold that we can't say but, we have to say and. I missed the and. mark and. And I'm being patient. Love it. That. And my other, my personal thing is I've been incredibly inconsistent with everything. So I'm with you, Dan. My goal was to tone up a little bit and like start not lifting like 20 pounds for bicep curls. So, but I can't even do 20 pounds anymore. I'm at like 10 guys. <laughs> so that's my, that's my personal goal for the next 12 weeks. First steps. Yes. Consistency is key. Awesome. All right, who's next? I'm doing a better job of follow up. Got a long way to go yet, but um, doing a better job with those. And I've got my own news going on. So. Love it. You're also driving, so we need to be careful. All right, who's next? What do you want to share? Okay, Carl. Yes, Joe. So this week I got my KW apparel, which I've been uh, advertising in my first ever Facebook live video. So I also uh, had an probably about three hours that I dedicated to my database this weekend. So those are my wins. And my challenge is to uh, continue to work on that database. Love it. So you got to figure out what that means, work on that database. So yeah. figure out, remember SMART goals, we have to be specific. So figure out what, what do I need to do every day? Annie's not on here anymore, but Annie, we talked a little bit about my leverage services and they brought in 1200 contacts into her command. So we figured out how many could she do a day? So she's doing 17 a day. She's cleaning up, she's getting their contact information, she's calling. Um, so she's working 17 a day. So then she knows when she's on track. And if on Monday she only gets 12, then she has to roll that five over to Tuesday, right? So she knows what that is. So, uh -huh. so be very specific about what in the next 12 weeks or the next six months, um, you know, focus on that. Focus on what you want that to be. Okay. And my uh, thing that I'm happy and accomplished about for the last six months was that I joined uh, productivity coaching. So. Oh, well, we are excited. I'm proud of that too. I'm excited you're with us. Yep. Thank you. All right. All right. So now we're to the next, the next exercise. And those of you that didn't share, share with me, we'll share, we'll go through this when you have your coaching. Um, let's, let's keep having this conversation. Okay. So relationship development is the next area we're going to talk about. So what new relationships did you develop this last six months? Joe just answered it. He got a coach. Okay. Um, which of your existing relationships did you significantly strengthen? Uh, which relationships have you overlooked and not given enough attention to? 
So this could be personal or this could be business. It could be lenders, right? You could be looking at lenders. Um, you could be looking at um, what other kind of relationships you might have business-wise. Shelly, networking, right? If you're networking, there could be lots and lots of different relationships. <laughs> Yeah, and if um, if any of you like to network and in, and if groups in your area have started networking in, again in person, it is a, it is a joyous occasion. I know that sounds really crazy to say, but it's a joyous occasion when you see people and um, you feel like you haven't seen them in years and years and years in real life. It's fantastic. Awesome. Hey, speaking of relationships, I just got a text message from Carol. Um, she is out of town. It's her anniversary weekend, her first anniversary, and wow. she needs a uh, someone to show a house for her on the west side of Indianapolis today, and um, she's going to pay $25. Is anybody um, interested? Dan? Okay. Dan, I'm going to send you Carol's contact information. Great. Okay. All right. Keep, keep, keep going back to your list. Um, Bryce just jumped on. And so you guys make your work on your relationship list, what we're working on. And Bryce, what can I help you with? Um, as I told you in the text, I couldn't read my text. I was in the workshop. I just saw <laughs> gotcha. you texted. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Mike Feldman came to me with an offer for an open house on his property in Fountain Square, if you're familiar with that property. And so it's his personal flip. It's actually like really nice. Awesome. And I don't have any signs. So oh, they're in the training room. So at, okay. at any Metro South down in the training room in the closet back in the back um, corner. So when you walk in the door, there's a door. It's like a mechanical room back there. Okay. Um, on the same wall as the main door that you walk into the training room. And there's a ton of signs. Okay. Gotcha. I wasn't sure um, if I, like I said, I didn't even know my options. So I didn't know if I like, I would have to rent signs from another no, agent. No, no, no. Just go grab what you need. And then I just, it's honor system. So just take them back. Right. Okay. And uh, what's this relationship? Um, well, this is our workshop today. So we are working on our mid-year review. So stay with us. We got another 30 minutes. Gotcha. Okay. Already. Yep. So grab a piece of paper. What we're writing down right now is what new relationships we've developed in the last six months. Yep. Um what existing relationships we significantly strengthened and which relationships we may have overlooked or not given enough attention to. And this could be personal or business, right? So we were talking about the kind of relationships that we might have business-wise. All right, we're gonna go quick, quicker through this one. So tell me if anybody, one or two people have something they wanna share. Well, certainly uh, strengthened relationships with people that I used to work with, uh, created several uh, lunches, uh, you know, to get with them and see where they're at in their careers and all that type of thing. Also uh, got with uh, a mortgage lender. I've sent them a couple different buyers now. And uh, so I played the stupid and what can you teach me about what I need to know as a new agent? And then uh, closed it with, um, we're looking at reverse bold would you be willing to participate in one of those with me? And definitely was agreeable to that. Love that. Tell everybody what a reverse bold is. They may not know. A uh, reverse bold is basically to uh, set up uh, advertising on your social media uh, with a giveaway. Uh, you spend four or five weeks promoting uh, on this specific day, I'm gonna give you a number to call. If you are interested in winning and you, and you set it up with something that is something that they all would want, but they would not buy for themselves. The, the suggestion was perhaps um, um, a Yeti cooler. You know, all of us probably have a cooler, but all of us have also heard what a great cooler Yeti is and we wouldn't spend $300 on it. But if you could get your vendors to help participate in that, you can greatly reduce your cost and uh, also they may be willing to help you with the cost of some of that advertising by co-branding. And uh, so then on that specific day, you get however many leads, it could be 10, it could be 50, it could be 100, uh, because the people are gonna call in, they're gonna give you all of their information you need for your uh, contact list. And uh, you're gonna put them in a drawing, you're gonna set up the following day, 
with uh, the actual drawing and announce the name of who the winner was. Very fun to have people call you and give you their contact information. And you also get an opportunity to ask them for referrals. Do you know anybody, right? So that's awesome. You know, the great thing about relationships with vendors is a couple of things. What Dan's talking about here, right? Some things cost money. Like, you know, they were talking about at Bold this week about a Peloton bike. Well, that agent did not buy the Peloton bike. She had sponsors buy that Peloton bike, right? She got some lenders and some other people to partner with her. And then they got to share in the leads, right? And then they also shared in the expenses. So you can have relationships that way. You can also go out to other businesses, business to business and develop referral relationships, right? Painters, you know, I'm, I'm a realtor. I'm going to have lots of need for painters, handymen, electricians, HVAC guys, you know, go to them and say, Hey, I, do you have an, do you, if you had a, if you had somebody that needed real estate service, do you have an agent that you refer to? And they say, well, yeah, you know, there's this one or there's a couple or whatever. Say, what would it take for me to be your primary person? What would be, what would it take for me to be your go-to referral? Right. And then ask them the same thing. What kind of, well, who's your perfect client? Who should I be referring to you? And remember it's a two way street. So you're sending referrals out. You should be getting referrals back. So those are relationships. Anybody else got a relationship they want to talk about real quick? Just uh, from my uh, long past, I coached over league baseball, had a young man who is, uh, he's an entertainer, but he also has a photography business. So I was able to share that today uh, with someone who is looking for photographers and that type of thing uh, and reestablish that contact. Love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Giving is the best way to receive, right? So remember that. If I'm going to give, give a referral, then I can receive a referral. Is that right, Shelly, Miss Networker? Yes, 100%. <laughs> All right. Next, the next uh, area of review is learning. And this should be easy for you guys. Like you guys are so learning based. You should not have a problem. What opportunities to learn new things did you take advantage of? I love it. So I got a couple bold people on here. Shelly, Dan, um, bold, right? Bold is a big deal, right? That's you had lots of learning opportunity there. Okay, what opportunities to learn did you take advantage of? Um, what were the things that you learned most about yourself? So in the last six months, what have you learned most about yourself? And then um, what were the things you learned most about your business in the last six months? For those of you that are new, this would be a very long list because you're learning how to build your relation or build your business, right? So think on that. And I want you to come back to this exercise. If you don't journal in the next couple of days, I'd like you to journal around these questions. And when we get all done today and I get done with the exam study group, I'm gonna email this, this list out to everyone so that you have an opportunity to use these as journal prompts the next week to really look at your last. You know what, if we pay attention to where we were, it helps us know how much further we have to go, right? Do you ever do that when you're driving your car and you look, how many miles do I have left? Well, how many miles I have left is how many miles I've already driven, right? Less the total, the total distance, less what I've already driven. So we have to look at where we've been to figure out how much we have left to go. All right, I'm gonna skip having you share learning because you know, our bold coach says she only has one feeling. I have lots of feelings. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hopefully you've learned a lot. You have some surveys out there that I've asked you to create. If there's anything that you'd like to learn, that you feel like you're lacking in, let me know, right? I, that's what we have these Saturday workshops for. And, and most of the time, half the time, it is what you guys tell me, either directly or indirectly. You may not realize you tell me, right? You may not realize you tell me that we have a need for training, but that's how I develop the workshop. So if there is something that you're lacking on and you would really like to see added, please share that with me. Okay, mistakes learning opportunities. I don't like the word mistakes, so I'm going to take that off the list and I'm going to call them learning opportunities. What learning opportunities did you have this year? The question is what mistakes did you make this year, right? If you made a mistake, that's fine, right? Mistakes don't define us. 
there are consequences to mistakes. And what we have to do is we have to identify the consequences or pay the consequences and identify the opportunity not to have to do that again. So what learning opportunities, what mistakes did you make that gave you some great learning opportunities? Which of those mistakes could you have avoided? This is where we start looking for that opportunity for learning. Which mistakes provided you with the most significant development and learning opportunities? That's this concept of failing forward. Do you know the best way not to fail? To anticipate potential problems. That's awesome. I love that. Being proactive is great, but the best way not to fail is not to try. But if you don't try so that you don't fail, where do you end up? Nowhere. Nowhere, right? So I love what Courtney's saying. Those are our learning opportunities, right? If we fail forward because we failed, we had a learning opportunity and now we can anticipate, we can be proactive so that we don't make that mistake again. All right, so what mistakes did you make? What mistakes could you have avoided? What mistakes provided you with the most significant development and learning opportunities? Will this be um, in the PC library? Yeah, I'm also gonna email it to everybody, dear. Okay. Because I really want you to think hard on this exercise, more than just the 30 minutes that we had here, right? We're just getting the started on it, get thinking about it. When somebody has something they wanna share, share. Here's the thing about sharing. I love this. We learned this in bold this week. Does anybody know, I always tell you what an AHA is, but do you have anybody know what AHA stands for? Or the bold people, do you remember? It means uh, agents helping agents. Absolutely. Love it. Yeah, so ahas, when you when you share, it's, it could create a thought for somebody that they hadn't thought of yet. That's why I ask you to share. So anybody have a learning, a, a mistake that they wanna share? We kind of get this in with the wins, but. I do. Yes, ma'am. Um, so it's, it's not something that I didn't know already, but I procrastinate <laughs> and you know looking back it's like man okay I know I have to do this I, I wrote it down and this is more like personal goals not my business but you write it down and you're like okay I'll get to it I'll get to it next day I'll get to it and you're like oh I'll do some of it and then in your mind you're like it's really not that bad I should have just did it and it's like a whole month later and you're like man you know so I learned a lot from my procrastination Awesome. So then how do we make sure we stop that? What, what do we do? Do we set some systems in place for ourselves? I tell myself, stop thinking so much and just do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> because <laughs> we make it, finish it over right? if, yeah. you, if you start something and you don't finish it and you think you're going to come back to it, what typically happens? I don't know. You don't. It never gets done. How many of you guys have a whole bunch of, just in your personal life, how many of you guys have a whole bunch of half done things? Just finish it, right? Just finish it. All right, anybody else have a mistake they want to share? Carla, you're going to hate this one. <laughs> I'm you listening. warned me and I was like, no, I, I did pretty good. And uh, I had a friend that I talked to her about having my license, but I didn't ask. And it was my fault because I just kind of assumed like, you know, her younger sister is just now in high school and like, you know, her parents have lived where they live forever and they listed. It happens to everybody once it's a dagger in the heart and you, now you've heard two stories because you've heard my story you have to ask if you talk and you tell them you got your real estate license that's not enough you have to ask them you know what would it take for you to what would it take if you had a real estate need here's a question to ask somebody right somebody that's your sphere or business to business or whatever like i mentioned earlier with the business to business ask the question so i got my real estate license and i have a question for you if you had a real estate need, what would it take for me to be your go-to person? 
right? If you had a real estate need, what would it take for you to think of me first? Sometimes just asking the question will help them think of you first. Noted. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing that though. It's an important thing to share because it'd be nice if the rest of you guys didn't have that same experience that now Shelby and I share. That's a, a, that's a loss of money. When you look at the amount of money that I lost just by two sales, she bought and sold, the amount of money I lost just by not asking the question was a huge learning opportunity. That was failing forward, right? I, and all of a sudden I wasn't afraid to ask anymore. So don't, don't be afraid to ask some people, would you agree that people who are important to you might potentially feel left out if you don't ask them to help and come along in your, your new endeavor, they don't, if you don't ask them to be a part of it, do you think they might wonder, wonder why she doesn't want to work with me? Yeah. All right. The last one, you know, is my fave and we're going to spend a lot. We got 15 minutes left. We're going to spend time on this one. It's time management, right? Because that is the number one thing that we need to do um, to make sure that we stay on task, that we're doing our 20%. So time management. How well did you manage your time in the last six months? Okay. Have you been focusing your time on the most important things in your life, your big rocks, right? Now this is business and personal. So big rocks, right? Have I told you guys, have you guys heard, and I don't tell the story very well. I'm pretty sure it was Gary Keller that I heard it from. So that's why I never feel like I tell it very well. But have you guys heard the story about juggling balls? I'm just gonna share it real quick while you're writing down, juggling balls. So we juggle all the time, right? Are we not constantly juggling, constantly juggling? Well, what we're juggling, if you think about it, we have some rubber balls. What's, what, what, what do rubber balls do when we drop them? They bounce. They bounce right back to you, right? They just bounce down and bounce, bounce right back up. Then we have some, we have some harder like wood balls, right? We drop them, they might just get a ding or something in them. They may not never quite be the same, but we can pick them up and continue, continue, continue juggling them, right? So we have the rubber balls that bounce right back to us. And then we have the wood balls that we have to reach down and we have to pick up. And then we have glass balls. And if we drop a glass ball, it may shatter. And if it shatters, we aren't picking it back up. It is not juggling anymore. So we have to make sure we know what our glass balls are. Okay, so when you think about your time management and have you been focusing your time on the most important things in your life, start with your glass balls. Am I spending the time on the things that are important that if I drop them and they burst, I, I can't get them back, right? And then your 20%, right? We know what your 20% is, lead generation, lead follow-up, script practice, and role play. If you do those three things, the next two things come, appointments and negotiating contracts, right? So the first three are the ones that you are most in control of. You're also in control of appointments because what's the best way not to get an appointment? Don't ask. Not ask. Don't ask, right? So you are in control of that as well. All right, so uh, how well have you managed your time in the last six months? Um, have you been focusing your time on the most important things in your life? And then I want you to make a list. Are there any significant time wasters uh, that you need to reduce or eliminate from your life? You may even wanna go back and look at your calendar or at the end of the day next week, make a list of all the things that you did and identify are there time wasters? And this kind of focuses back into what we talked about with Jessica and my leverage services as well. If you go back and look at that, um, that document that she shared at the very beginning of the chat, which is the, the services that they offer. Um, I mean, they, I'm, I'm just gonna pull that up while you guys are writing. Um, they will, they will create your Facebook business page and do a monthly content calendar for you for $125. Like those two things combined together. I love that. Um, like she mentioned, they'll do your first Facebook campaign for you between $10 and $20. They're going to add all your contacts into your database for you and tag them for you. Think of the time savers there. But think about what are your significant time wasters. There's a bold law. 
and I got to make sure I say it. I'm probably not going to say it wrong, but don't, don't mistake movement, right? For, for actually doing something productive. Just because you're busy doesn't mean that necessarily that's productive work, right? So we want to make sure we're not spending our time doing things that, that aren't productive or the stepping over dollars to get to dimes concept. All right. Um, when are you most productive? I'm most productive in the morning um, because once I stop or slow down in the late afternoon or early evening, I don't want to do anything. I'm tired then. And you remember from Jenny's video a couple weeks ago when we did the 80-20, that's why most people, we've talked about this, the reason why most people have their lead generation from 9 to 11 in the morning is exactly that reason. That's when they're most productive, least inter interruptions. It's not because that's when they're going to get the most people to answer the phone. Yes, Miss Shelby. Okay, so I also have that problem. Like I would get up and get ready and I would be productive and then like it would start being later in the day. And I found that if I keep my shoes on, for some reason, my brain stays in, it is work time. Like we are getting stuff done. If I keep my shoes on. Keep your shoes on. You know what I love about that, Shelby? It's about knowing yourself, right? So much of this question here, when am I most productive and when am I least productive is about knowing yourself. So if you're, mo if you're, not, if you're not a morning person and morning time is not when you're most productive, and you try to force it, right? You're not being true to yourself and it's not gonna be successful. So make sure you know yourself. All right, who wants to share about any changes in your time management in the last six months? Have you made improvements? What do you, what do you know about your time management now that you didn't know previously? If I write down my plan, I am a lot more likely to follow through with it. Awesome. Yes, if it's not in your calendar, if it's not on your schedule, it doesn't exist. Yeah, I would have said the same thing. Time block it or it's not going to happen. Time block, not going to happen. I, you know what? Somebody said to me once, they looked at my calendar and they said, oh my gosh, that would drive me nuts. You're so structured. I can't be that structured. And the thing is that structure actually gives me freedom right? Because I know when I get my time, I know when I have me time, right? Because it's on my calendar, it exists. If it's not on my calendar, it doesn't exist. If I'm just winging it, I'm never going to be focused enough to have the time that I need for myself. So it's not really about, I mean, it is structured, but there's a reason for it, right? All right, as we wrap up, here's what it's going to tell you to do looking ahead, okay? It's going to have you come up with your top three business goals. Okay. And I'm not talking about your dollar goals, the things that we do on your GPS or your 411. I want you to think in the bigger tense of that. What are three things that when I get to December and I look back, I want to see that in the second six weeks, I did amazing. What did I knock out of the park? Okay. And then I want you to do the same thing for your personal goals. I want you not to forget about your personal goals, not to forget about you you are important. Remember that oxygen mask analogy. We've talked about it before. What do they tell you when they tell you about the oxygen mask? If they drop down from above. The ears on first before helping someone else. Absolutely. So make sure you've got your top three personal goals for the next six months locked in. Um, Relationship development, Re which relationships will you focus on strengthening and develop developing in the second half of the year? Who do you want to meet? Who would you like to create a new relationship with? And who can most help you achieve your work-related and personal goals? So who's my work person and who is my, my personal person? Who, who's going to help me with my personal goals, those top three that we identified for ourselves? Then I want you to think about what areas of learning do you need to most focus on? What new skills do you want to develop? What skills do you need to strengthen? Maybe you already have the skill and you just need to strengthen it. What things do you need to keep current on? And what one skill, if mastered, would have the greatest impact on achievement of my goals? It's 
kind of a one thing question, right? What's the one thing I need to focus on so that all other things are either unnecessary or easier? So what's the one, one learning and knowledge thing that you could add to your arsenal that would help you the most get to your goals? And also think of this in terms of your business and your personal goals, right? There may be some personal things you need to put in there. And then habits, what time management habits do you need to develop or strengthen, okay? Um, if you do not have a schedule, if you can't tell me when your lead generation is on Monday, I'm telling you what the one thing you need to figure out how to do in the next six months is to be able to answer that question for me anytime I ask it, right? Um, what three habits, if you developed and sustained, would have the greatest positive impact on your work life? And then ask yourself the same thing on your personal life. Personal life for me, I, I had an aha in the last couple of weeks. I struggle with drinking water. Not my thing. I had really struggle. You guys know my balls that I've told you guys about for lead generation, right? I have a bowl of balls. Now I have a bowl of 10 balls by my kitchen sink. And for every eight, eight ounces of water I drink, I get to move my balls from one bowl to the other. And so at the end of the day, I can tell how much water did I not drink. Now I made the mistake the first couple of days, I had three balls left. I tried to drink three glasses of water. I didn't sleep very well because drinking three glasses of water right before you go to bed is not a very good idea. So now I am trying to have my, and my, I'm, I have it on my calendar. It's on my schedule at three o'clock to go check my water balls. So I know how many balls I have to drink preferably by six o'clock so I can sleep. But anyways, that's just a personal story about trying to get a better personal habit and using my visual because I'm a very visual person. So moving those balls feels like activity. It's like checking things off a list. So, um, all right. So, and then what habits do you currently have? What bad habits do you currently have that you need to replace or put into trash can? What, what, what habits do you need to break? All right, so I'm gonna email all this out to you and you have to know that your next couple of, uh, all through July, as you guys have your one-on-ones with me, this is what I wanna focus on. I wanna make sure that we are on track to finish the year like amazing, amazing. All right, what else can, what, what anybody have any questions? What can I help with? We got four minutes left. Carla, um, you said that it, the new one starts on the 12th. The next, oh, thank you for reminding me, Jason. Yes, if you are not in the 12 Weeks to Success, the next round of the 12 Weeks to Success starts on the 12th. Also, I'm on vacation the week of 4th of July. So we all have the 5th off for 4th of July. And then I'm taking uh, Tuesday through um, Saturday off. We are not going to have a workshop that Saturday. So we'll have a workshop next Saturday, and then we're going to skip a Saturday. I am working to see if I can find somebody to still do open hours for open office hours for you guys, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? So that you have someone to go to. And I'm also going to have a resource list for you. Um, before I go on vacation so that if you need somebody, um, you have, you'll have you know who you can contact uh, to get some help. But yes. Well, I looked on the, um, what, Jason? I looked on the Indy Metro training schedule thing where the links are, and I don't find one for that, your, the new 12 weeks, and then um, the seventh for the, what is it, Ignite starting over? Ignite. Well, they're just starting that we're just working on the July calendar right now. So next week, I just got it in my email yesterday to approve. So I imagine Monday, Tuesday, she'll have July's calendar up. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, and the 12 weeks, I don't know if the 12 weeks are going to be on there or not. It's just the, it's the script practice link. We meet right. for the 12 weeks. We meet at 815. Next week, we're going to have two sessions and I haven't put the times out yet, but I'll send it to you when you're at a glance. We're going to have two sessions where we're going to start talking about the 12 week program, what that looks like. For those of you that are already in the 12 week program, there's going to be a few new things, but we'll cover them on the 12th. Um, but um, for those of you that haven't done the 12 week program, if you'd like to learn more about it, we're going to have a couple of opportunities this week to learn about them. And then we'll talk about it on Saturday next week as well. Thank you. All right, if you need anything from me today, um, I have the exam study group and then I am going to be driving. So um, text me and um, be patient. I will get back with you. Have a fabulous weekend.
you. You too. you too. I'll see you guys on Monday morning at 8.30 for script practice or 8.15 for the 12-week huddle. Have a good weekend. Bye, guys. Uh, Thanks for coming today. Uh, I hope it was helpful. I'm in Louisville. Uh, River Road Barbecue, 12 o'clock, if anybody wants. Shelly, you didn't tell me Armand was coming to visit. What did you say? Where are you going to be? Uh, River Road Barbecue at 12 o'clock. You need Winter to give road. more, you need to give more like notification when you're going to be in town. Okay, well, I'll start doing that. <laughs> you should do that. We would love to see you. I got open houses today, so I can't hang out with you, but I would like to very much. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> Rice, is there anything else I can help with before I go? Yeah, I was going to ask, um, do you do like calendar invites for this? Um, I want to make sure that it's on my schedule so that I don't miss any of the workshops or open hours or anything like that. Yes, you're going to get from me on Sunday, you're going to get a uh, at a glance and it's going to have a list of all of the links that we have on an ongoing basis. Okay. So you'll have it next week. And then, and, and it's, it's pretty simple. So every Saturday, except for, uh, July 10th. Okay. Every, I'm not going to be here. Uh, yeah. Every Saturday from 9 to 11, we have a workshop. So, okay. yeah. So I'm gotcha. glad you texted me. Yeah, seriously. Um, I I have a quick question for you as well. Um, I'm going to be in Ohio for vacation from the 12th to the 16th, which is awful timing. I didn't know if that would – I think I might be able to still do the 12 weeks to success, depending on how my schedule looks while I'm there. You can but, do the 12 weeks to success and miss the first week. Do not worry about it. Okay. I just want to make sure. So, no like, problem. you know, bold, it's like very strict on scheduling. Yeah. Like that, so right. You'll find that I'm a, I'm a much, much softer touch than our bold coach. No. Yeah. So yeah everybody she's has a, vacation and vacation is important to have, right? It's the same yeah. reason why I'm not going to be around on the 10th. So, right. so absolutely. You can join the 12 week program. So your 12 weeks will just start on, um, the following week and you'll just have twice as many people to call that week all righty well sounds good then <laughs> awesome let me know how your open house goes yeah i know um like i said it's on mike's property i don't know if you've seen it yet i i haven't no okay you should um check out like his social media he has a video on there okay. and it's kind of funny because it's his property so he gets to decide how he markets it so you know how he does listing videos and whatnot and he's really uh -huh. good at them so this listing video that he did for his property is like very unorthodox. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So I'll check it out. It. Um, it's really funny, but it's also it also gives a good um, insight as to what the property is, and it's like it's very nice, like top of the line, everything. So. Awesome, awesome. All right, yeah, but all the signs are down there, so just go grab what you need. Got it. Alrighty, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.